Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonnens of FanDuel. We need to wrap up our Week 11 coverage by giving us the top stacks on the board here on FanDuel. What's going on, Jim? It's chaos, Greg. Uh, there are so many moving pieces with this Week 11 main slate. we got Alvin Kamara up in the air. My boy DeAndre Swift might not be able to play. Devonta Adams is questionable now. We don't know who's playing quarterback for the Saints, so... It's a lot of moving pieces. I would love to have answers as we record here on Friday morning, but I don't have them. So just so much up in the air, and it's making things, uh, it's a bit of a buzzkill for what could have been a really fun slate here, unfortunately. It's still going to be a fun slate. We're just not necessarily sure where that fun is going to come from. But one thing that we can count on, we believe, is Deshaun Watson. Watson is going to be out there on Sunday, paired up with Brandon Cooks for you, the obvious stack, of course, in your head would be pairing up Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller. You're going down a little bit in price here to Brandon Cooks. I imagine this is because you want to get some of these top players in. Uh, Brandon Cooks pairing them up with Deshaun Watson. Why is this a combination that works for you on Sunday? It's not about the salary, Greg. It's about the revenge game, obviously. <laughs> Brandon Cooks against the Patriots. How dare you overlook the most obvious reason to love Brandon Cooks? But actually, I mean, Cooks has had a good role this year. 23% of the targets. He's had 28% of the deep targets. He actually has more targets for the season than Will Fuller does. I prefer Will Fuller straight up. Will Fuller is amazing. But like you said, we do need those salary savings. Dalvin Cook being 10-5 impacts every decision we make on the rest of the slate because he's in an amazing spot. We want as much Dalvin as we can get. If Alvin Kamara is good to go, he'd be great too. So we need salary savings and both actually Deshaun Watson and Brandon Cooks give that to us. Watson is only $7,700, which is borderline outrageous on a slate where there aren't a lot of uh, high upside quarterbacks. Deshaun Watson is that I'm guessing his salary is lower because he's facing the Patriots, but that's not as much of a downside as it used to be. They rank 15th against the pass this year. Once you adjust for schedule, according to number fires metrics, they do get Stefan Gilmore back this week. That is a good thing, but Gilmore hasn't really been his usual self this year. So I don't really care that much that they're getting a good player back in their secondary. I think that uh, this is enough to make Deshaun Watson cook. He's been running a lot ever since they made the change to Romeo Cronell as their head coach. Romeo Cronell revenge game too. We can't overlook that as well. But I think there are enough factors here. We can take the salary savings, go to Brandon Cooks, and go to Deshaun Watson. This is a slate where we don't have a lot of upside at quarterback. The top five quarterbacks and fan duel points per game this year aren't on the main slate. Only three of the top ten are, so... We need to find guys who have a path to the ceiling. Deshaun Watson is at home as a slight favorite against a, or a slight underdog against a non-threatening defense. So I say we go to Deshaun Watson, pair him with Brandon Cooks, and allow ourselves more flexibility to get to guys like Dalvin Cook and others. Watson, somebody that we could rely on so heavily last year. Obviously, this season has been a bit different, but this week against the Patriots with Brandon Cooks in that revenge game, as you mentioned, uh, it seems like a good spot. I'm also not worried about Stephon Gilmore's return here. Uh, I think Deshaun Watson and Brandon Cooks, his offense for the Houston Texans, should be able to run up the score a little bit and, and take advantage of this soft New England Patriots defense. My favorite quarterback wide receiver combination on the board is in this next game, and that's with Justin Herbert. Even though he got a crappy haircut, crappier than I did for the record, <laughs> he's still going to dominate the New York Jets here this weekend. Again, my only question is why Mike Williams over Keenan Allen, and I have to imagine once again, it's salary related because I can't find the revenge game narrative between Mike Williams and Adam Gase and the Jets like normal. Well, the revenge game narrative here is between their head coach and the Jets, uh, Anthony Lynn, a former Jets assistant. So obviously there's that. Kalen Balaj too. So get up to speed on these revenge games here, Greg. But I think the reason we go to Mike Williams is that he gets high leverage targets. And if we're going to use a wide receiver in a game where one team is heavily favored, we need them to be able to score points in bunches. And because Mike Williams gets those downfield targets, he can do that. He has 33% of the team's downfield targets since their week, uh, their week six bye week. So a four-game sample. He has 33% of the downfield targets. That's a really good number. Mike Williams is not a cash game play because his overall volume is low. We want to go Keenan Allen there, but I think that the downfield work does make him viable in tournaments when we want all the salary savings we can get to get to guys like Dalvin Cook. That's why I want to go with Mike Williams here. He had 99 yards in one of those games since the bye, 81 another 
he has the upside we need, and he is in a salary range that I'm going to be in a lot, uh, frankly, is the the mid to high 5,000s at wide receiver. It's a very good range. There are a lot of viable wide receivers in that range, and Mike Williams is definitely one of them. Now, the reason we can go at the Chargers here is, you know, the Jets did show some life in Week 9 before their bye week. They finally had, for the first time all year, Denzel Mins, Jamison Crowder, and Rashad Perriman all healthy, and they put some points on the board. It was against the Patriots defense that's likely not as good is what the Chargers will be this week. Seems like Chris Harris could be back. That benefits them too. But we did see life. Makai Becton should play here. So I think that's enough to justify using the Chargers, thinking the Jets may be able to score points. We also know the Chargers can't win easily. They just It's not in their blood. So I think that that is enough to let us go at the Chargers stacks here. I think the Kalen Balaj is the best play on this Chargers team, but I also do want to get exposure to their quarterback, Justin Herbert, despite the bad haircut, because I can't talk anything about hair for, by any means. We'll pair with Mike Williams to get those salary savings. I agree that Kalen Balazs is probably my favorite start for the Chargers here in this game. As soon as he was able to get away from Adam Gaze, he exploded. And now Anthony Lynn says, hey, we're going to give this guy as much of a shot as anybody with all the injuries we have in our backfield. So Balazs is the guy you definitely want to get in there, especially at his salary. But Justin Herbert is somebody that I'm interested in as well. If they do get up big, and if they do, the Jets will come back because the Chargers, as you mentioned, <laughs> nothing comes easy to them. Uh, Mike Williams should be the recipient of a few big plays, so we hope. He now in the safer play, Mike Williams, probably the larger ceiling play, but Justin Herbert, a must play, along with Kalen Balaj here on Sunday. One final stack to get to, and this is one I, I thought we talked about earlier, right? It's the Falcons and the Saints, a traditionally high-scoring affair. And Matt Ryan and Julio Jones have been doing this against this team for a very long time. Calvin Ridley, I believe, is expected back, but Julio Jones is still the apple of your eye here this week. Why going with Julio Jones pairing with Matt Ryan? over Calvin Ridley. Yeah, I think this one is weirdly kind of dependent on what we get uh, as far as news from the Saints side of things because it seems like it may be Taysom Hill starting, and if that's the case, that lowers the appeal of Michael Thomas. And the reason I wanted to go Julio is because he's $100 cheaper than Michael Thomas and a direct pivot off of him at what should be likely high popularity. Same line, I think, it goes with Matt Ryan. He is $600 more expensive than Jameis Winston, so Jameis Winston does start and winds up being very popular, then it would make Matt Ryan a pivot. Now we don't really know what that looks like. If Taysom Hill starts this game, it's going to lower the appeal of everyone tied to it because it would likely lead to a more run-heavy script for the Saints offense, and that's a downside for everyone. But I still think there's a shot that Jameis Winston does play, and that could allow us to use Matt Ryan and Julio Jones as pivots. Now, Calvin Ridley is awesome, and I love Calvin Ridley. That's why we like Matt Ryan, because Calvin Ridley makes him more efficient. Julio, in the games that he's played with Calvin Ridley, where they've both been able to finish the game, still has 22% of the overall targets, 35% of the deep targets, and 25% of the red zone targets in their full games. Now, Ridley is $7,800, and I think that he is very much in play too, but I think the safe route is used to use the guy not coming off an injury in Julio Jones. So if I'm you know, filling out multiple tournament entries, I'm going to use uh, both Julio and Calvin Ridley. But if I have just one, I think that Julio is a safer route to go and the one I will use more often. So this is dependent on the news we get regarding the Saints as we get closer. If Taysom Hill is starting a quarterback for the Saints, that does lower the appeal of everybody in this game outside of Taysom Hill being a lock at tight end on FanDuel at $4,500. But if we get Jameis, this game is really fun. I think that Matt Ryan and Julio Jones would be really good pivots off of the chalk on the Saints. As you said, if Taysom Hill is the starter, you got to lock him in there at $4,500 at the tight end spot. It just frees up so much for you. And I'm just worried that Sean Payton's going to pull an Aaron Boone, announce a starter, and then, of course, the next play, we have a different player in there. That's what could be the case in New Orleans. But on the other side, for the Atlanta Falcons, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, like I said, have been doing this a long time. And it's weird because it's Julio's not the wide receiver coming off an injury. It's Calvin Ridley. Julio has played. He's been healthy. And then he had a week off to rest whatever lingering effects he had. He should be raring to go here this weekend. Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, it's a connection. That's work. It will work again on Sunday. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Jim. We appreciate the time. Good luck this weekend. Say to you, Greg, I appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to talking the Thanksgiving slate with you on Monday. should be a pretty fun slate. Uh, we'll talk about that then, and I am excited, as always, for that three-game offering. A three-game offering that never turns out to be really any good. That's what next Thursday should be like, but we'll talk about it on Monday.
For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Have a fantastic week 11. Enjoy the games. And we'll see you back here on Monday for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.